guys, this is Nova Gnome Creations, and welcome to my super beginner-friendly gnome tutorial. The materials needed for this tutorial are four shades of yarn, and I am using a worsted weight. Uh, you can use any weight of yarn that you would like. Just go down a hook size or two uh, from what is recommended on the ball band. Um, so I am using a worsted weight yarn, which recommends a 5.5 millimeter hook, but I'm using a 3.75 millimeter hook. And you do this so that it keeps your stitches tight enough so that your stuffing doesn't show through when you're doing amigurumi, um, which is crocheting plushies. You're going to need a beard color, a skin tone, a body color for like your body, uh, your gnome's outfit, and a hat color. You're also going to need some polyfill or some yarn scraps to stuff with, or you could use a combination of both if you would like to use up some of those little yarn scraps. Uh, you're going to need a darning needle for sewing with, uh, which is a yarn needle. You're going to need some scissors. Any type of scissors will do. Uh, you're going to need a stitch marker. I would highly recommend a stitch marker when you're working with amigurumi because you work in the round and it's easier to keep track of your first stitch. You will also need your hook in one to two sizes smaller than the weight of yarn that you are using recommends. Um, I usually go about two sizes down and you will optionally need a row counter. If you don't have one, that's no problem. You can keep track in a lot of ways and I go over those as we are working. Um, but you have things around the house that you could use. Um, and optionally, if you would like to use a hot glue gun to make this a more accessible um, tutorial for you, you may use a hot glue gun. And I show you how to use both a hot glue gun and um, the sewing method with your yarn needle. Also optionally, you'll need a pet brush to brush your yarn. In this tutorial, I will show you how to do both a brushed or unbrushed beard. So you really have full customization of what you want your gnome to look like. This tutorial is going to be broken up into three videos um, and I am going to walk you through the process very closely so that you have all of the help you could need. And this is going to be a longer tutorial, but it's going to be really beginner friendly. So the first video is going to be the body of your gnome. And the second video will be the hat, the arms and the hands, and the nose. And then the third video is going to be all of the assembly process and the beard. Um, and then in the future, I plan on making customization option videos with some suggestions on how to theme your uh, gnomes if you would like help with that. So things like flowers, appliques, Christmas ideas, Halloween ideas, different things that you could do based off of this super beginner friendly gnome tutorial to customize your gnome and make different types of gnomes. So I hope you enjoy. For your body color, um, you can use any color that you want or any combination of colors that you want. Um, keep in mind that this is replicating clothes, so you don't want to make um, the gnome body a skin tone. Uh, because then it will look like your gnome is naked. <laughs> um, also, you will be having skin tones um, that you work with later and you don't want it to be um, too similar in color. Uh, and then, you know, once again, look naked and also not give you a contrast. So um, to begin our gnome, we're gonna do a magic circle. And I will slowly go through this process, but I do have a tutorial on how to do a magic circle and I will link that in my description where I slow it down, do some slow-mo and take you through it like one step at a time. So if you need extra help with the magic circle, check that out. But in the meantime, put it in front of two fingers, put your tail in front of two fingers like this. You're gonna wrap it around your finger again, your two fingers. Um, so that it crosses over itself. You're gonna go under, scoop this up, pull it through, turn, and then you're gonna take this, put it over your hook, and then you're just gonna pull that through. And this doesn't count, whoops, this doesn't count as a stitch or anything. This is just part of your magic circle. So like I said, if you need um, a slowed down version of that or need more help, um, just check out the description for the link to the magic circle tutorial. So working over both pieces of yarn, uh, we're gonna put six single crochets into our magic circle. If you don't know how to do a single crochet really quickly, this is how you do a single crochet. You take your hook 
and you go through your circle. You grab your yarn and pull it through. So you have two uh, loops on your hook. You yarn over the hook and then you pull it through. And that is a single crochet. So we're gonna go ahead and do six of those. If you need more help with a single crochet, um, you can either rewind and play that in slow-mo or um, you can YouTube search for uh, how to do a single crochet stitch. So we're just gonna put six in here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then the way that we close up this magic ring or magic circle is to take this tail of yarn that we were working over um, and pull on it. Now don't pull too, too tightly yet. We're gonna leave a little bit of a, a hole in the middle for now um, because it makes it easier for us to get into the first stitch over here. So <clears throat> you're gonna insert your hook into this first stitch and we are going to be doing an increase stitch. So for an increase, we're gonna put two single crochets in one stitch. So if you need to, you can count your way back to know for sure that this is your first stitch, which would be counting not the loop on your hook. This is just your, your like working loop, if you will. You're not gonna count that as anything. Um, one, two, three, four, five, and six, which is the one that I have on my hook. So you're just gonna go ahead and pull your yarn through and make, Oops, make sure you don't use your um, tail. That's actually, <laughs> that's a very good example of something to make sure you're not doing. Yarn over with your working yarn and pull through and we're just going to make a single crochet. And you can go ahead and you can throw your stitch marker into that single crochet that you just made because that's gonna be the first stitch of your round and this will help you to know when you've completed your round when you're back to that stitch marker. So into the same stitch, we are going to put another single crochet. Because it's an increased stitch, we get two single crochets in one stitch. So now we have two stitches here and we can go ahead and close our magic ring the rest of the way um, because we have worked our first stitch and we don't need to worry about um, it getting too tight and not being able to get into it. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna give a really nice pull on this tail that we have. And it'll cinch it right up and you don't have a hole anymore. It makes a nice solid start. So now we're just going to work an increased stitch in each stitch around. So we had six single crochets um, and we're gonna work two single crochets into each stitch which means by the end of the round, we will have 12 stitches. So that is two stitches in the first three. And then we're gonna do one and two stitches in the fourth one. One, and two stitches in our fifth single crochet, and one and two stitches in our sixth single crochet. And you can double check at any point that you want to to make sure that you have the right amount of stitches. So after this round, you should have 12 stitches. And the way that you can easily count your stitches is these little V shapes are, are your stitches. So you've got one here, You've got one here, one here, and you get the idea. And you can just count them back and confirm that you have 12. And you also know that you're back to the beginning because you're back to your stitch marker in the next stitch. Um, if your magic circle is coming open a little bit, you can just tug on it throughout the process. Um, there we go. As you get a little bit further, like I just did, um, you will feel that magic circle really cinch up. Um, when you're pulling on it. So don't be afraid to give it a nice good tug. Um, once you get it like really cinched up, it's not coming open. <laughs> so that was round two. For round three, we're gonna go ahead and take our stitch marker out. And we're gonna work one single crochet and one increase all the way around this time. So our first stitch is gonna be a single crochet. 
And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pop my stitch marker back in so I know when I'm at the beginning of my round again. So this is a one single crochet and then an increase repeating round. So we're gonna do an increase now as our second stitch. So one single crochet, two single crochets in that same stitch, and then we're back to the beginning of our repeat, which is one single crochet. And then an increase. One single crochet. And then an increase. And you're just gonna repeat this all the way around so this stitch coming up only gets one single crochet. One single crochet. And then this next stitch gets an increase. So it gets two single crochets in that same stitch. And then back to one single crochet. And then another increase. And then one single crochet, and we're ending on an increase, and we're back to our stitch marker, which works perfectly. Um, since we started our round with a single crochet, um, we will end our round with an increase. So that's one way to know um, that you did the row right, is if you ended with an increase after you started with a single crochet, then you are right on track, and you're also back to your stitch marker. So that was round three. For round four, we're gonna do two single crochets and then an increase. Okay, so I took my stitch marker out and we're just gonna put one single crochet into that stitch. And then we are gonna pop our stitch marker back in. And then this round is gonna be two single crochets and then an increase. So we did our first sing single crochet and then we just do our second single crochet in the next stitch. And then in our third stitch, we're gonna work an increase. So we're gonna put two single crochets into that same stitch. And then we're just gonna repeat that pattern around. So we're gonna go one single crochet, one single crochet, and an increase. one single crochet, one single crochet, and an increase. One single crochet in this stitch, one single crochet in the next stitch, and two single crochets in the same stitch for an increase. And then one single crochet, one single crochet, increase. One single crochet, one single crochet, and one last increase. And that brings us back to our stitch marker. And as before, you know that you're on the right track because we began with a single crochet and we are ending with an increase and you're back to your um, stitch marker. So now uh, we are gonna do four single, or three single crochets and an increase. So we're gonna go ahead and pop out that stitch marker. We're gonna do one single crochet, one single crochet, and I'm gonna throw my stitch marker back into that first um, spot one single crochet for our third stitch, and then an increase. And that's going to be our repeat for this round. It is going to be, let me grab something to point with. So you see these V shapes, and these are your stitches. You're going to put one single crochet underneath of this V shape right here because that is, uh, is our top of our single crochet from the last round. You're gonna put one single crochet here, one single crochet here, one more here, 
And then under this one, you're going to do two single crochets because that is your increase. So go ahead and do three single crochets and an increase and repeat that all the way around. And when you get back to your stitch marker, you should be ending with an increase right here. Alrighty, and if you have made it back around and ended on an increase, you can count your stitches if you would like to and make sure. I will show you how to um, check to see if your stitches are right. So if you look at the front of your stitches here, you'll be able to see your increases and your single crochets. Um, so your increases, you're going to have two of these kind of V shapes in the front. And then your single crochets, you're just going to have one. So let me try to get a good angle for you. Actually, here, let me flip this. And I'm just going to pull this up so that I can take my hook out. I want to show you how to double check your work because that will be, that will be really handy for you to know. So um, right here was our last stitch and we ended on an increase and you can see that there are two stitches coming into the same little focal point right here which is the stitch that they're in because there's two in that one stitch. Now for the next stitch you can see this little v-shape right here and it only has one going into this spot because it's just one stitch. One single crochet into that one stitch. Same here you can see this little v-shape the only one going in little v-shape the only one going in and then we're back to an increase right here and you can see that there are actually two little v-shapes going into the same spot and you'll also be able to feel them if you have trouble seeing if you're like um maybe hard hard of seeing um you can actually feel these stitches um so take a moment to feel your work kind of push on the single crochets and run your fingers over to this um, increase spot and you'll feel like a little bit of a knot in your work. So that can be really helpful, especially if you're using a yarn that's difficult to see. Um, and then also another telltale sign is you see the shape of our work, how it almost looks like a bit of a hexagon. And that's because these increase stitches, they deter us from a perfect circle. Um, because you're having two stitches there, it kind of squares off a little bit. So that's where our increase stitches are also. So that's a few different ways for you to be able to tell. But just remember that this right here is where your stitch is coming out of. And you can kind of see that there just seems to be a little bit of a cluster there. And you'll know that that's two stitches right there. So hopefully that's helpful um, so that you can always go back and check your work if you're confused about where you went wrong. Um, you know, maybe your stitches didn't add up. Maybe you got to the end of this row and you're not on an increase. You can go back and go, oh, I see what I did right here. I missed doing an increase or right here. I only did two single crochets instead of three or something like that without having to frog the whole row back. So that was round five. Now we're going to move on to round six. So to move on to round six, we're going to pop out our, our uh, stitch marker and round six is going to be four single crochets and then an increase repeat. So our first stitch is going to be a single crochet and we're going to stick this stitch marker back in there. And the way that I use my stitch marker is I put it under the V um, and lock it in place just the same way as I would put my hook under the top of the stitch, which is that V shape. So that was one single crochet. We're gonna do four in total. So we're gonna go into the next stitch. We're gonna work one single crochet into the third stitch and we're gonna work one single crochet and into the fourth stitch and we're gonna work one single crochet. Then we're gonna do an increase because we're doing four single crochets and then an increase this time. And an increase for this one is just two single crochets into that stitch. And that's going to be our repeat for this round. So one more time with you, we're going to do one single crochet, a second single crochet in its own stitch, a third single crochet, a fourth single crochet. And finally, we're going to do an increase, which is going to be two single crochets in the same stitch. 
So go ahead and continue your way around and I will meet you back at our stitch marker. Make sure that you end on an increased stitch and if you don't, use the uh, techniques that I just showed you to try to figure out where it is that you went wrong. Okay, so if you just finished your round six, you should be ending on an increase and back at your stitch marker. Go ahead and take your stitch marker out and we're gonna begin round seven. So your work may be bowling up right now and that is totally fine, that's to be expected. Um, chances are it might be bowling up like this. So the key here is this is the outside of our work. This is actually the inside of our work, the side that our magic circle tail is um, hanging from. So you're gonna want to make sure that you manually yourself keep this um, cupping up the right direction. Um, and here shortly, it will, after probably this round, if not this round, the next round, it will naturally bowl that way. Um, but when we were working on it before, it may have bowled the other way. So I just wanna make sure that you know, this is the outside of your work. This is the inside of your work. And we are working on this side going this way. And that is important because for round seven, we're gonna do some back loop only stitches. Um, if you've never done a back loop only stitch, don't be afraid, it's not difficult, and I'm gonna walk you through the process. So, our first stitch right here, this is just gonna be, by the way, um, a single crochet round all the way around, but they're gonna be back loop only single crochets. So, our first stitch here, you'll notice that it's got our little V shape on the top, this little V shape, Okay, so that's the top of our stitch. This one that's closest to you is your front loop. And this one that is towards the inside of your project, towards the side that has the um, magic circle tail, that is going to be, whoops, it unfocused. That is going to be your back loop. So always this one that's furthest away from you is your back loop. And then this one that's closest to you is your front loop. So making sure that you have your project facing so that this is the outside of your work and this side is the inside of your work where your magic circle tail is, we're gonna be working in this stitch furthest from you and that is gonna be your back loop. So we're doing a back loop only single crochet, which is you just go under that back loop only, grab your yarn and pull it up and yarn over and pull through just like a normal single crochet, uh, but we're only working in that back loop. And then you can go ahead and put your stitch marker in here because that's gonna be the first stitch of our round. All right, and I will keep you zoomed in so I can show you a few more times what the back loop only stitch looks like. So here is our stitch again. Back loop only is gonna be this one. We're gonna grab our yarn and pull it up, yarn over and pull through. And we are just going to continue to do that the whole way around this time. And don't mind that it looks a little bit gappy down there. It won't stay gappy as you continue going around. But that is how you do your back loop only single crochet. If you need any extra help with that, you can slow this down. Um, don't be afraid to slow the tutorial down at any point if you need that. The um, little gear icon should have a playback speed setting. So just click on that and you can slow it down if you need to. And you can always um, rewind and rewatch anything that you need to see again. But we are just gonna work this back loop only single crochet round all the way around. And you'll notice that it's making a ridge that looks like this. And that is completely normal and it should be doing that. All right guys, so continue doing back loop onlys until you get back to your stitch marker and I will meet back up with you. Okay, so now that we've made it back to our stitch marker, you should have a back loop only stitch in each um, stitch all the way around. And you'll notice that it's wanting to cup up the, the correct way now more. 
um, which is kind of the purpose of doing this back loop only row. And you'll also notice that you have a bit of a ridge, which is, this is actually your front loop that you didn't use. So now we are finished with row seven and we are on to round eight. So now we're just going to work up the height of our gnome. Now for the height of our gnome, we're just gonna do single crochets. So you can throw a single crochet into that first stitch and put your stitch marker back into it. And we're just gonna work our way around until we get to the height that we want our gnome to be. I'm not going to um, go slow for this part because it's just going to be repeating a single crochet. So you can pause the video until you get to the height that you would like. Um, and I will come back after I have completed my single crochets and I'll let you know how many um, rounds of single crochet I chose to do for the height of my gnome. So I did a total of nine rounds. And what that means is um, each time that we went around, when we got back to our stitch marker, that was one round. Um, so I worked nine rounds. And um, if you want to do exactly what I'm doing, you can go ahead and you can pause and you can work nine rounds yourself. Um, and this is just going to be the main kind of height of the body. We aren't going to just suddenly cap off right here. Uh, we will be working more um, to round off the top. Um, but just keep track somehow. I like to use this. Um, it's just a little row counter or stitch counter or whatever. Um, a really cheap one. And uh, they make fancier digital ones, which I do want to get one of those at some point. But for now, that's what I use. Um, I've even used, before I uh, used that, I used a D20 dice. Um, I've used, you know, the notes app in my phone or pulled up a calculator and just changed the number. Um, you can always just write it down on a piece of paper, but some way to keep track if you're going to do nine rounds, um, because it seems like you would know, but trust me, when you get about halfway through, you can get distracted and lose count of what row you're on. So just keep track in some way and meet me back when you have the amount of rows that you want to use for your body. So uh, that was step eight of our uh, beginner friendly noom body. Now we're gonna move on to step nine. So for step nine, we're gonna go ahead and remove our stitch marker. And we are just going to start to decrease uh, steadily and that is going to give us a nice kind of rounded top for our gnome. Um, and so we're gonna do four single crochets so throw your first single crochet in there and put that stitch marker back in that first stitch. And then go ahead and work a second single crochet in the next stitch. And then three and four. All right, and then when we have one, two, three, four stitches, we are going to do a decrease. And this is gonna be an invisible decrease. Um, invisible decreases are really useful for things where you want the outside to look really nice and you don't want there to be a little bit of a knot or um, giveaway that you have done a decrease because a traditional decrease can leave a little bit of a knot um, and you can see that knot when you're doing amigurumi. Um, so this is what it, how you do an invisible decrease. Remember how um, when we were doing the back loop only stitches, I showed you the back and the front loop. And if you can't recall, the front loop is the loop that is closest to you and the back loop is this loop that is furthest from you. Um, to do an invisible decrease, we're going to just be working with the front loops this time. So you're gonna take your crochet hook and you're gonna scoop up the front loop of the first stitch and then you're going to not yarn over or anything and you're going to scoop up the first loop from the second stitch. So you're going to have two loops on your hook and then you're going to yarn over. And then you're just going to pull through both of those loops. Okay, and then you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through. 
and that is going to create a pretty seamless look when you're working around. It looks like a single crochet. Um, it doesn't leave a knot or anything, but you just decrease. So you turn two stitches into one stitch. And I will show you how to do that again. So we're gonna single crochet four again, because that is gonna be our repeat for this round, is single crocheting four and then decreasing. So there's our third single crochet and our fourth single crochet. All right, so once again, how to do this invisible decrease. You're gonna take your hook and you're gonna scoop up that front loop only on your first stitch. Then you're gonna take your hook and you're going to scoop up that front loop only on your second stitch. So you'll have two loops on your hook. Then you're going to yarn over and you're going to pull through both. Then you'll yarn over again and you'll pull through both of those. And that is how you do an invisible decrease. And then we're just gonna single crochet four. One, two, three, and four. And one last time, I will show you how to do an invisible decrease. So scoop up that front loop only on your first stitch, and then go to that second stitch and scoop up your front loop only on it as well. Then you're gonna yarn over, and you're gonna pull through both of those loops. Then you're gonna yarn over again, and you're gonna pull through both of those loops. And that is your invisible decrease. So go ahead and repeat that the rest of the way around, doing four single crochets and an invisible decrease. And you should end on that, right, the two stitches before your stitch marker uh, with an invisible decrease on those stitches. Now that you have finished your step nine, we're gonna go ahead and remove our stitch marker. And we are just going to work a single crochet round. So this is just gonna be a straight up single crochet round. Uh, no increases, no decreases, um, just single crocheting from the beginning of our stitch marker until we get back around to the end of our stitch marker. So as we're working around, I just want to um, point out to you that if you do lose count at some point um, when you're doing your decreases, you can tell the difference between these invisible decreases if you look closely. Um, I didn't mean that you would be unable to discern them from the other stitches, just that they don't immediately stand out and they don't create a um, like difference in... Uh, when you're looking at the side of your amigurumi because if you use an or if you use a regular decrease um you'll be able to see it like i said it kind of creates a knot especially after it is um stuffed but let me give you an example so looking back a row let me grab my darning needle to point with uh looking back a row where we did our decreases you'll see how a single crochet looks so that's a single that's a single, 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 and then you'll notice this one looks a little bit different, and that is right here, kind of separated out for you. That was our decrease stitch. And you can see right here, these are single crochets. So it does stand out a little bit um, if you're really looking, and then you can count your stitches to make sure that you have four in between the decreases if your stitch counts are off or you lose track of what you're doing. So now we'll just continue around doing our um, single crochets. I just wanted to take a moment to um, explain that just in case you need to um, need to double count. So also if you get to the end of a round and your stitches are off a little bit, um, like say you get to the end of the round and you're supposed to decrease, but you only have one stitch left. 
personally, um, I don't get too concerned about something like that. And I just say, okay, well, I was going to decrease, but since there's only one stitch here, I'm just going to single crochet because at some point I must have done something a little bit different than I was supposed to. And I ended up with one stitch at the end and that's what I would end up with after a decrease. So I'm just going to roll with it. Um, and unless that's happening to you like a lot and you're like way off, it's really not going to be a problem. That's just my personal advice is just to not get overly stressed out um, about just like things being off a little bit here and there. And obviously, if you know you're a perfectionist, um, then that's not going to be something you're comfortable doing. And that's also totally fine. Um, but don't get too stressed out if everything's going well and you are off by like a stitch just kind of compensate um, and don't let it get to you. Don't let it stress you out. Don't let it discourage you. All right. So that was um, our step 10 and we did a round of single crochet. Now we're going to do uh, three single crochets and then a decrease. And that's going to be our repeat for the round. So we're going to pop a single crochet into that first stitch and we are going to throw our stitch marker in there. And then we're just gonna do two more single crochets, each in their own stitch. And then we're going to do our invisible decrease. So anytime we do decreasing in this project, it's going to be an invisible decrease because we are doing an amigurumi. If you struggle with that invisible decrease and you would prefer to just do a regular decrease, that is completely fine. Um, you may see it a little bit more, but if you can't do the invisible decrease, then um, you know don't let that stop you from making amigurumi. It's not going to be a make or break thing. Um, so you can just do a regular decrease if that's the case. And let me show you. I have um, a little yarn tangle in here. There we go. Let me show you what a regular decrease looks like. Um, and then you can do that if you need to. So I'm just gonna do my three single crochets since I just decreased. All right, and then this is what a regular decrease looks like if you are struggling with the um, invisible decrease because it can be a little bit more difficult to manage. You can just do going through the whole stitch, not just the front loop only. You go through and you grab um, a loop and then you go through the next stitch and you grab a loop. And now you're gonna have three um, loops on your hook. You yarn over and you pull through all three. So it is easier to do this stitch. And let me just show you the difference. So I'll go ahead and work up my next three stitches and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And um, it doesn't stand out quite as much yet, um, but once you like are completing the whole body and stuffing it, everything else is really uniform. And that decrease, you notice how it's more of a knot and puffy. Um, you'll see this more versus like here is the invisible decrease. And then there's the regular decrease. So like I said, if you need to do the regular decrease, don't let that stop you from doing Yamagurumi. Um, I didn't even know about the invisible decrease for quite a while. I was doing regular decreases and a lot of people do regular decreases. So um, that's just a preference that I have. Um, and I don't have trouble um, managing it. So that's totally, you know, doable for me. But it might not be doable for everyone. You know, it's not um, as easy to get into just those front loops and to, um, you know, not pull out, um, pull out a loop and, you know, insert into the second stitch separately since you're inserting into both at the same time, that can be kind of difficult. Um, so there is an alternative uh, method for you if you need that. And I'm just single crocheting three around and decreasing until I get back to my stitch marker.
and there's my last of my threes and then my last decrease. All right, and that is the end of round, or not round, uh, step 11. So on to step 12, we are just going to single crochet again. So um, we're getting to the point now where we should start to think about stuffing the body. Um, you have a couple different options, and I'm just going to kind of mull them over with you as we crochet around. So... You can stuff with polyfill. Uh, you can stuff with yarn scraps. If you don't normally make yamagurumi and you don't have any polyfill or anything like that to use, um, if you have an old pillow that you don't use anymore, um, that you're willing to kind of sacrifice to the cause, um, you can cut that open a little bit and harvest some stuffing from it and then just kind of pull the stuffing apart with your hands to fluff it up because it's most likely kind of pilled together and um, is lumpy and you want it to be, you know, fluffy. Um, and I did that for my early amigurumis and I've done that before when I've ran out of stuffing. I had a pillow that I just kind of would harvest stuffing from and we were even still using it. I would just kind of open up the pillowcase, take out some stuffing out of the pillow and put it back in there. So that's totally something you can do. Um, it's like the same exact stuff pretty much. Um, so it's a pretty thrifty way to stuff your project. Um, if you would like to weight down the bottom of your gnome, you can also do that um, before you start stuffing because this is going to be the bottom of our gnome and we are working on the top currently. So if you would like to weight down your gnome, there's a couple different ways you can do that. Um, you can put some pebbles in the bottom of here. Um, you could put little beads, like those little glass beads for aquariums in the bottom. Um, you could use whatever you have on hand. Honestly, um, the possibilities are pretty endless. Uh, you can use beans. You can use rice. Um, and if you're going to use something like small like that that could come out, I recommend putting it in um, some kind of a vessel. So that could be like um, pantyhose. If you have like the end of pantyhose, you could put your rice in that. If you have like little tool bags or little like organza bags, you could put them in that. Um, so weighting down the bottom of your amigurumi is not necessary. Um, but if you would like to do that, just to be sure that it will stand um, on its own and not need to lean against anything, um, then you can do that. Um, there is a good chance that it will be able to stand on its own without that. But, you know, depending on the way that you stuff it and the way that it ends up kind of weighting out with uh, how you adorn it and everything, it may be, um, you know, a little more weighted to one side and more likely to tip over. So that is totally a, an option for you that you can weight it down. So if you're going to weight it down, just put whatever it is that you want to weight it down with in first and then stuff. So at this point, I am going to go ahead and stuff up to where, up to like where we are roughly. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll stuff and then we will finish. Um, and when we get right to the end, we will stuff again if we need to, um, just to make sure it's nice and full. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to grab your polyfill. And um, a good rule of thumb is you will always need a lot more polyfill than you think you will. Um, it condenses a lot. So I've got a nice big pile of polyfill that I just got out. And I'm just going to rip a chunk off. Let me see if I can zoom you out a little bit. There we go. So um, if you didn't notice what I did for um, stuffing purposes was I removed my hook and I pulled up on this loop just so that I can stuff without worrying about my stitch coming out. And we know that this is the first stitch because we are about to start a new row. So you can pull out your stitch marker if you would like to just so that you're not having to contend with that when you're also doing the polyfill. Um, and then after we do our first stitch on the next round, we can replace it. So I am not going to worry about weighting it down. I think it's going to stand perfectly fine. Um, and so I'm just going to stuff it. And um, 
I'm just going to work in chunks of stuffing until I get to the firmness I want. And my recommendation is that you want to stuff um, nice and firm and secure. Um, when I first started doing amigurumi, I would understuff my plushies. And um, I prefer the way that they look um, when they're nice and solid. But that is totally a personal preference. Um, so you can stuff until you are happy with the way that it feels. If you stuff it firmly, it's going to hold its shape better. So that is just my personal preference. And make sure that you're not just pushing down in the middle. You're going to want to kind of stuff towards the sides. So as it gets more full, you can take smaller pieces of stuffing and just kind of tuck them down the sides. And try to um, keep it pretty even. When you're all done stuffing and we finish off the body, you can kind of roll it around in your hands and massage it and stuff to get your stuffing even if it has, you know, gotten a little bit wonky. But you do want to make sure while you're placing it that you keep it as even as possible so that you don't have to try to uh, fix it later. So here's what mine is looking like. And I am uh, pretty happy with that. The bottom will not stay perfectly flat. It's going to round out. Um, and that is normal. So I'm pretty happy with that for now. Let's see. Um, and I will add more stuffing as I go. This is definitely not, you know, my final stuffing. But you want to stuff it as you go a little bit because... Um, when this hole gets smaller, you're not going to be able to fit your hand down in there and really be able to manipulate the stuffing um, the way that you would like to. I'm debating if I want to add a little bit more before moving on. You know what? I'll do one more row and then I will add a little bit more then. Okay, so we just finished our step 12 and we're moving on to step 13, which is going to be um, two single crochets and then a decrease. So when you're all happy with your stuffing, you can go ahead and get your hook back in here and kind of use your finger to sort of push the stuffing down um, and crochet so that you're not pulling stuffing through your stitches. Um, and go ahead and put that stitch marker back in. And go ahead and do your second single crochet. If you do pull stuffing out, you can always um, pick at it later and remove it from the outside. Um, you could even grab tweezers and do it. Um, but I just try to kind of tuck my finger behind my stitches and keep that stuffing from getting over here. And it's also why I don't stuff overflowingly. Um, I stuff as I go for the last couple of rounds. So there's two single crochets and then we're just going to decrease. And that is going to be our repeat for the round. So we're just going to do two single crochet. And we're going to decrease. And we're going to try to hold our stuffing down a little bit so that we don't have to worry about it trying to pop through with our hook. And we're just going to work our way back around to the beginning. So one single crochet, two single crochet, and a decrease. And it's going to be kind of rounding out as we go up, and that is what we were hoping for. It um, might kind of resemble a bit of an egg shape. And this is going to be the top of our gnome that is going to be under the hat when we are finished. So just ending on a uh, decrease. And I'm going to pull up on my hook so that I can add a little bit more stuffing. I'm going to go ahead and remove my stitch marker since I know that that is going to be the first stitch when I come back to it. And I'm just going to grab my polyfill again. 
So the next um, step is just going to be a solid decrease round. We're going to decrease in every stitch. Um, and then we're going to be closing up the body. So you're going to want to go ahead and stuff till you're happy with it at this point. Um, you can stuff as you do your decreases if you would like to. But um, after those decreases are in there, you're not going to be able to really get down into the plush anymore to add more stuffing. Um, you'll be able to add just kind of in the tip um, before you sew it closed. So bear that in mind. Um, at this point, you're going to want to kind of be happy with your final um, stuffing. And I'm going to stuff so that it shapes out the body nicely. Um, stuffing also is going to, or stuffing well, is also going to give you a nice full body shape. Whereas if you don't stuff it very solidly, um, it's not going to kind of stretch out the stitches to where they're, where they would, um, naturally want to sit. They're going to kind of de deflate. And so it's just not going to look as nice. So that is one of the reasons why I prefer to stuff more tightly. Now, if you overstuff, you might pull your stitches apart a little bit and be able to see the stuffing through. So there is kind of a happy medium. Um, it's a lot easier to understuff than to overstuff, in my opinion. And then I'm just going to kind of roll it between my hands and kind of squish it down. You know, getting that nice gnome body shape. And I think I am happy with my stuffing. So once you are happy with your stuffing, we can go ahead and we can insert our hook back into our working loop. And just sticking our finger behind these loops to hold that stuffing away, we are going to do a straight up decrease round, okay? So what that means is in whatever you prefer, whatever method you prefer to decrease, um, we are not going to be doing any single crochets. We're just going to decrease in every um, two stitches. So there's our first decrease. And I'm going to put a stitch marker in there so that I know when I get back to my first decrease. And then I'm just going to decrease over the next two. and decrease over the next two. And I'm just gonna do that all the way around. I'm gonna decrease until I get back to my stitch marker. Okay, I'm decreasing over the last two stitches before my stitch marker now. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the stitch marker. So at this point, you can add more stuffing if you would like to, um, or if you are all happy with what you're doing, um, you can go ahead and you're gonna pull up a little bit on your hook so that you don't have to worry about that coming out and go ahead and get yourself a long tail of yarn because we're going to use this tail of yarn to sew closed our head. So it doesn't have to be super long, but just however long you want for doing a little bit of sewing. And then you're just going to pull up on this and pull that loop right through like that and grab your darning needle. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to thread our yarn onto our darning needle. 
If you don't have a darning needle, you can do this step with your crochet hook. Just do the same thing that I'm doing to the best of your ability with your crochet hook. So the way to close this up nice and uh, easily is going to be to grab the front loop only of each stitch around. So we're going to go under the first uh, stitches front loop only and we're just going to pull our yarn through. And we're going to pull it until, you know, all the yarns through, but don't pull tightly yet. Go through that second stitch on the front loop only. Pull that yarn through, but don't pull tightly yet. And we're going to continue all the way around, only grabbing the front loop, which is this one that's closest to you on top of each stitch. And you'll see why we're grabbing only the front loop in just a moment because it creates a nice little um, ability to cinch in and um, still look nice. If we grabbed the whole stitch it um, could create a little bit of um, gapping or gaping um, more so than just grabbing the front loop onlys. Okay so once you have all of your front loop onlys you're going to go ahead and you're going to tug on this and you're just going to give it a slow and gentle pull and it is going to just cinch right up and you can hold down on here if you need to and give it a little tug and boom we have closed up the amigurumi top how easy is that so you just create a little cinch and you can just draw string it closed basically so um, after you've done that, we're just going to weave our tail back and forth for some added security. We're going to be hiding our tail um, at the same time. So we're just going to kind of stitch back and forth. Until you're happy with that. Keeping the uh, longer part of your stitchings underneath um, and then keeping the parts that are going to show shorter so that, you know, you don't see big long uh, threads of yarn on the outside. And then once you're happy with your stitching and kind of hiding that tail, you can go ahead and go through one last time and then grab your scissors. Pull a little tighter on this than you normally would and cut it. And then just give it a little bit of massaging around, kind of poke at it, and that's going to just disappear that little tail that you just cut. All right, and that is our gnome body. So now at this point, you can kind of um, rub it around or roll it around and press on it and whatever you want to do to make it look how you'd like it to be. Um, and then you have completed your gnome body. So the next step that we're going to move on to is making the hat.